Call's weekly missions have finally been added to Warframe and in this guide we're going to take a look at exactly what changed in his camp, what we can do, we're going to take a look at the rewards that we can get from the missions, we're going to take a look at how that works, we're going to take a look at Call's fashion and of course in the end of the video we're also going to have a quick run through of his first mission, a quick little walkthrough. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to stay tuned. So, first things first. To get started, you gotta go to the Drifter Camp, walk out of your orbiter and go over to Kal's Camp in case you haven't done that already. Talk to him and he'll show you a screen to start his current mission. There's always one mission per week with a certain objective. This week it's a stealthy sabotage and under it you see additional challenges that you can perform in the mission. For example, we could complete the mission without dying or we can find some K-Drive spare parts and so on and so forth. If you do these bonus challenges, you'll earn a new resource that will be used to purchase things from Chipper, who's the next NPC that you're gonna unlock as soon as you have the first mission done. And don't worry, you can start the weekly mission as often as you want, so you don't have to do all the six bonus tasks in one run. Would be pretty impossible, actually. But I'm sure somewhere out there, there will be someone who has already done it. But before we go on, let's take a quick look at what the new NPC Chipper has on offer, so what we can buy with those new resources. First of all, we have the five new Archon mods that were also introduced with the Veilbreaker update. That's Archon Continuity, Archon Flow, Archon Intensify, Archon Stretch and Archon Vitality. These mods do the same thing as the normal version of the mod, but in addition they also have a nice effect when you trigger certain status effects in certain ways and for some specialized builds I think those ones can be really nice in the future. I'm looking forward to see them used in really cool builds. The next thing you can buy from Chipper is an ephemera, so get that if you like to. But what's more interesting, you can finally get your hands on Styanax on the main blueprint, his three components, as well as three weapons that also came with the Veilbreaker update, which include the Aphentis, Styanax's signature weapon, so you can finally start farming for that. And last but not least, you can get an additional Archon Shard from Chipper that brings your total amount of Archon Shards that you can gain per week up to two. And before we jump into the mission, let's take a quick look at Fashion Cow. To his right, you'll find this Grenier type of locker thingy. If you interact with it, you can see which type of armor sets and helmets and everything you can use on him. You could, for example, also go and use your Warframe armor that you already unlocked on him. But also, in addition to that, you unlock Grenier armor sets as you rank up Cal's camp. So you'll have quite the selection to go for here. And of course, you can also select the colors as you desire, so you could also go and make a pink cow. I'm sure somebody will have already done that. But as we saw with the fashion, as well as with Chipper's inventory is, you will have to rank up the camp even further in order to be able to gain access to all the offered items. As I'm recording this right now, one or two hours after release, there's no entry in the wiki yet and there's also no information out on how you actually rank up the camp. I got the first rank up for the camp after I finished Cal's weekly mission for the first time, but I'm not sure if it ranks up once per finished mission or if it has to do with how many bonus objectives you solve. So if you have any information, please put it down in the comments. Would be really nice so we can all benefit from the knowledge. And with that being said, let's take a look at how to solve Cal's first weekly mission quick and easy and how all the mechanics there work. So once we start in the mission, we have a short, let's call it story bit, where you can walk around and you'll have a conversation with daughter. She explains how this facility works and how it does those veils. And once you get to the first energy gate, it becomes interesting. Interact with the console and that will give you control of the surveillance camera. You can control the surveillance camera and aim it at the generator which is connected to the gate. Then simply click that and it will turn off the energy grid on the gate. And in the next room, we can already see a more difficult version of that task. You have another surveillance camera. You also have to aim at the generators that are connected via the red wires with the energy gates. But this time you can see that you can also take control of other cameras by pointing your uh, cursor at them and then select them. So you can switch back and forth between the cameras to adjust your angle so that you can view all the generators and hit all the generators to switch off all four energy gates that are blocking your way to the next room. What we see right here is one of the bonus objectives, getting all the dog tags of Fallen Grenier around the level and you can see if you get close enough to the pickup, it will actually get marked on the map, but only if you haven't done that bonus objective yet. If you have done it, it will not be shown on the map. 
So this mission is all about stealth, as you can also see here. You avoid the guys with the helmets on, and you also sneak up on enemies from behind to get the stealth kill bonus to kill them right away, as you are starting with only a melee weapon, and you cannot shoot. Throughout the level you will find consoles marked with a white marker on the map. Interact with them to manipulate the level so that you can actually gain a better view on the generators that you need to switch off. All these surveillance camera access points will be marked with an orange marker on the map, so walk to all the points and then you see all the generators as soon as you will have all the white consoles enabled. And once you switched off all the four generators in the first room, you can advance to the next room. On the way you'll find Veiled Solaris, you can go to them and use your three in order to break their veils and this is also one of the bonus objectives. And here we see one big heavy machine which is the second big task in the mission. You will have to go up to the control room and here you find an image puzzle. There are four segments of the machine with images hovering over them. As you see, every one of these segments is connected with a red cable to a device on the side of the room. Use the surveillance cameras in the room to adjust your angle to see which image is displayed on the side and then switch the connected segment of the middle machine to that image and once you've adjusted all the images, click the big generator in the middle to advance. Once that's done, you finally get a gun but also all the enemies are up for your head so they will storm you and you're gonna have to shoot your way through the hordes which is actually not too difficult but you might want to be careful with the veiled flying enemy types because they do a crap ton of damage. It's not like in the new war quest where it's an instant game over once you get seen. They actually shoot you and you can run away from them but they do a lot of damage and you gotta be careful that they don't kill you. Pick up a thing that Daughter points you to and this is sort of an airstrike type of thing. You can mark an area on the map and it will destroy basically everything in its vicinity. As you can see right here, pretty convincing and that's already it. Flee out of the facility, either you shoot your way through or you can also just run through and ignore all the enemies as I'm showing here. As long as you make clever use of the cover and run a bit zigzaggy so they don't hit you that much. And once you come towards the exit, there will be a little boss fight coming up. That was a nice surprise. If you ask me, that was actually also quite a nice boss fight as Cal. It's one of those big ragnoids that we also know from Fortuna and the way you fight him is actually pretty easy. Don't let him get too close, you know, get some distance between you and him. You can guide him towards those freeze barrels and then shoot them so he won't jump around like crazy. Also, you can, you know, throw grenades at him, which does quite a decent amount of damage. You can shoot him, but the best part about this is you can also use the airstrike to do big damage on him, which I'm showing right here in the background. And if you hit one or two of these airstrikes, he will be down really fast. And once that's done, you can go to the dropship and the mission is finished. If you ask me, the weekly mission was insane fun because you were not underpowered in a way. You could actually get seen and get away with it, unlike the new war quest. But at the same time, you also have a certain weakness so that you actually have to take care of what you're doing and cannot just blindly run in guns blazing. I absolutely look forward to the next upcoming missions because I had a lot of fun with this one. Please write me down in the comments what you thought about the mission. Have you had fun? Have you had difficulties? Was it too easy for you? Let me know what you think. Let's have a nice conversation. And if you want to know all the other stuff about the Veilbreaker update, for example, how to build Styanax and get him ready for a steel path, or how the Archon Shard system works, then absolutely click those videos right here. Leave the channel a sub if you haven't already. I'd greatly appreciate that. And until then, I wish you, of course, good loot.